What's up guys and welcome to Andy's Playground. I'm your host as always Andy and today I'm going to be showing you guys some footage from an event where I got to meet legendary Imagineer Bob Gurr. So just as a precursor, Bob Gurr was hired by Walt Disney in the 1950s to work on amusement park rides, become basically a Walt Disney Imagineer. And he basically pioneered a lot of the rides you guys know and love. Like he worked on the Doom Buggies for the Haunted Mansion, he worked on Autopia, he worked on Pirates of the Caribbean, People Mover, a lot of transportation type vehicles. And he was such a legendary dude and he actually answered one of my questions. Honestly guys, I really hope you guys enjoy the footage. I'll try to improve the sound quality if I can. If not, I'll see you real soon. Here to talk about his new book, Bob Gurr, Legendary Imagineer, Life and Times, Disney and Beyond. Please help me welcome Bob Gurr. <laughs> Something we wouldn't really know about off, off of a book or something like that, personally. Oh, his, uh, when he moved to Los Angeles, he had $40 in his pocket, um, and he needed housing after a, a short time. Uh, so he was there with his brother. You don't buy a house, you build a house. You know how you build a house? You look at a catalog and pick out a cute looking one, order it, and it's got uh, 12,000 parts, and it's got a 75 page book, and you, you put it together. Huh. <laughs> <laughs> you, didn't, you didn't know that. <laughs> no. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Walt's, Walt's father was a builder, and his mother was an architect and a draftsman. They were totally figured you buy a kit house and stick it together. The houses are still there today, side by side, they're on my bus tour. Wow. Wow. Um, you know, well, let's, I'll take that one and you. you know, I was, so my question is, if Walt Disney lived to see Disney World, do you think what would you think was his favorite attraction would be at Disney World? Probably the one that the people are smiling the most. We're supposed to have fun. Look at all the cheery stuff. There's, I did two attractions the other day. One had a lot of a dark gray rock work and not much to do, and the other was uh, a little <laughs> Pixar ride. Which one were everybody smiling? Pixar. Pixar. <laughs> And that last question was to you. Yeah, I got a burning question. Um, 
it, it's some near, near my heart and your heart too. I'm a former Monroe pilot. I did the fours. I was around when the sixes came around, and that's why I'm here because you're like the godfather of the Monroe. You're my hero. <laughs> <laughs> Rumors are floating. We're getting new ones. When was it said or not? I'm here now. They're being refurbished for more. Are we expect to see anything new coming down the pipe? Because you know the would like to see them, but I also know the company and money wise. But what's 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 your opinion going to happen in the next five in, in years? The in the past year, I was totally misquoted <coughs> on a uh, on a Disney blog, uh, so that's an area that I have to stay away from because I'm not privy to the internal organization. But uh, sometimes companies take an extra ten years to make a decision. Right. We just, we just have to find out together. Well, I'm still, okay, I'm okay. still partial to sixes. I like them. I'm yeah. there, but okay. I'm I, yeah, I can I can talk to you about Disney history, but I can't tell you about internal problems today. <laughs> <laughs> oh, really? Oh, they'll fire me again. <laughs> <laughs> okay. I think we got started pretty good. You know, sometimes I'll do um, uh, do programs that are conventional, where they'll say, "Oh." Please talk for 20 minutes and wait 10 minutes for Q and A stuff like that. I did one in Concord, California uh, last fall, and uh, I said, "Why don't we do a Q and A?" And then at the end of the Q and A, I know what you're interested in, and then I'll do the show. <laughs> so would you like to do it that way? Yeah. 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 Going Q and A. That's good. Yeah. Well, you're smiling the most. So <laughs> Bob, you said that uh, after you left Disney, you did some really crazy stuff. Uh, what is your favorite, uh, you know, challenging post Disney crazy project? None of them were challenging. Now, I'll tell you what. I'll tell you what. A lot of people who are uh, conventionally trained, they go to college. Uh, college is good, but it's dangerous because you will be trained in a certain way. Mm -hmm to do things, and it's by rote, because this is called a curriculum. You have to follow a curriculum. I feel sorry for some people who go to college, get a degree, because you assume that you have a process. You're gonna follow that process, and you're gonna apply it to everything. Well, it doesn't work that way. You might have a big job, you might have a little job. So first off, figure no process, okay? Also, figure anything you learn, forget it. And listen to the question the guy asked when he wants you to design something. Now you're in a position where your mind is wide open and you can do something. Then you're not spooked by a crazy project. You follow me? Okay. Now that seemed to work uh, with uh, everything that I did out of that 150 jobs. Obviously, one of them was to sink uh, a ship in Las Vegas on the street where you can't hide it behind a curtain. Two big companies turned Steve Wynn down, said, no, that's too risky, we're not, we're not interested. But I had two friends who were uh, uh, from Disney, and they had their own company. We, went, we got asked to go take a look, and we took a look, and in two hours, we got the job. No handshake, no boilerplate, no estimate, no nothing. And Steve Wynn ends the meeting, and he says, uh, okay, guys, you got the job, you give us a preliminary price on Friday, goodbye. Wow. <laughs> if you work for a company like Disney, it takes eight months of negotiations and the boilerplate is that thick. See how much fun it is? <laughs> 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 oh, uh, some of the concrete is still out there. If you're out there and ask, ask them to send that to show it to you. We had a uh, manager of uh, Walt Disney World, a guy named Dick Moon. Does anybody know that name? Yep. Yeah. Yeah. That is the most powerhouse guy I ever met in my life. So it's the kind of guy you needed to get stuff done. Walt was smart enough to hire a guy that's got to that smart. But Dick had ideas, and sometimes we'd work, and he had an idea for a wave machine because it sounded so cool. We could sit there at the poly, and watch the sand out there, and watch the water go back and forth. And all that machine did was just uh, shake its concrete foundation right up out of the sand every time. Uh, he never did take all of it out. But still today, amongst older managers who are still alive, we kid Dick Nunes about his wave machine. <laughs> <laughs> the guy's got to go to his grave with that thing still sitting there. <laughs> 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 oh. Be curious from the start. All right, I'm dead serious. Sometimes the, the parents will ask me, they say, why don't 
child wants to be an imaginary. Um, so sometimes I'll ask them, I'll say, at five years old, what turned you on? What got you excited? And sometimes a little five-year-old won't shut up. <laughs> other times they stare and they say, what did the old man say? <laughs> I answer, you're not going to do anything. Uh, if the kid gets serious and he's smart, I'll say, first you got to do, choose your parents well. You want DNA that is working. <laughs> if you got my drift, then you know whether you can do this or not. <laughs> After that point, hopefully you've been curious. Uh, we already talked about uh, the curiosity. And you apply that curiosity constantly. Uh, you have to have a diligence to do stuff that you're interested in, and then hopefully it's what somebody wants you to do is what you would like to do anyway. So you get into the position that literally 24 hours a day on a <coughs> project in the moment, you are thinking, uh, thinking about it intensely, just totally intensely. Um, I'll give you a hint how you can tell that up. Walt was the kind of guy that was thinking 100% of the time on the multiple projects he's working on. He got off the airplane and uh, uh, the car is about five minutes wait, so we have dead time, five or six guys standing around. Men are like car salesmen. They're going to have to fill <laughs> space with words, and the words will always start, say, did you hear the one about <laughs> If you did that to Walt Disney, that eyebrow, <laughs> you know what you just did? You proved to him you are not spending 100% of your time on his project. Mm -hmm. That is the intensity that it takes if you want to do something really, really good and you don't better go to a company like Imagineering and ask to come in the door without having that attitude and that you can apply that to any business or anything that you're doing. It's, it's a very, very intense Done through the main branch of the library, did Bob Casey contact you? I'm just curious. That's that's the one. He they called and he said, "Hey, we're going to be in town. <laughs> yeah. We got this event at the Grand Floridian. It's the Memorial." Oh, the original flying saucer of Disneyland. <laughs> 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 um, it was too early uh, for its time uh, yeah. for some technical reasons. Uh, how many of you ever understand how the little flying saucer worked? It was written up in the E-Ticket magazine. That little valve, that crazy little valve, you got to think of that. Uh, there's mm -hmm. air pressure on it in big uh, air uh, plenum chambers that were trying to be controlled by uh, air conditioned bathrooms, like used in big buildings, and this was long before computers came along. Um, if we were to build that today, we would have uh, computerized control to handle the strange um, Sonic waves that go back and forth in plenum chambers that uh, would stabilize those little valves, so they wouldn't get into a jumping harmonic that would just trip them all open and cause your life to stop. That's a technical answer. The rest of you just look at the group. But uh, yes, um, I would have hoped the company would have uh, done something like that rather than do the Luigi's uh, tires. Because I, I wrote the Luigi's oh. tires uh, <coughs> extract couple of years before they decided to go ahead and I kept asking questions to them um, and I didn't get any good answers. <laughs> I'm not sure I'll some ideas here. When any organization starts a new idea, you want to have a lot of people around uh, that have some pretty <coughs> good answers, but you want to have some people that ask some intelligent questions. That's, that's, always, that's always the thing. When you get people that are blue sky and they're all enthusiastic, you can start uh, moving along and you get so much dynamics in a project that by the time you open it, it's fatal and you didn't know that because you, you didn't ask the questions up front. Example, in the case of the original flying saucer, it was, you know, about so and so diameter, you could handle one large person and one little kid very nicely. Uh, the really large person, had it, it didn't work well, but it would work. And the little kid, he had a good time because it was his promise. <laughs> Today we have people that are a little bit bigger than we had a long time ago. And I asked the question after I wrote it. I says, why do you have two people? Well, they told us they could double the capacity if we put two people in there. <coughs> do you understand what happens when you make something bigger to accommodate the people? 
the weight goes up by the square of that dimension. And the car is a lot heavier. Well, we know that. That's why we decided not to use little valves and have high pressure motors running the whole time to do it. Well, let me ask you this. I see a lot of couples, uh, the two of them, loving couples, the gross weight of the load is 700 pounds. <laughs> How is that going to work? Well, we've never had that question before. <laughs> <laughs> okay, what about the little teeny kid in this great big heavy car? He won't have enough mass to tip that car and he'll sit still and he probably won't come back. <laughs> well, I build it and it's not there anymore. <laughs> Thank you guys so much for watching. It was such a really, really cool meeting with Bob Gurr. He signed one of my Haunted Mansion posters, which I'm definitely going to treasure for a very, very long time. Thank you guys so much again for watching, and I'll see you real soon.